Trev's Hockey Show. I'm the Trev. It's too sweet. Anyway, happy what's left of trade deadline day. And really, I mean, as for the day itself, this year's trade deadline day, what a drag. Now every day leading up to this year's trade deadline day, that's where the discussion lies. So, I'm not going to talk about every trade that went down. I'm just going to talk about the ones that I think are worth reacting to. So, here's my reaction to this year's trade deadline episode. I don't want to call it a day because everything happened essentially before the day. Either way, let's talk about it. So this year's trade deadline didn't really begin a couple weeks before. It began at the end of January, essentially, right before the All-Star break. January 30th, when Vancouver traded Bo Horvat to the New York Islanders for essentially Anthony Bavillier and this year's first round pick, which is protected. And then the Islanders went ahead and locked him up long term. So hopefully this move pans out for the Islanders, because, I mean, for the last two of the last four years so far, they've been ready. Hopefully this is their push. Next big name was on February 9th, when Tarasenko finally got traded after he put in his trade request how long ago? Finally got traded to the Rangers. For Sammy Blay, Hunter Skinner, this year's conditional first, and next year's conditional fourth. No. It's just a rental thing. Where Tarasenko goes at the end of this season, that's going to be the interest, I'm sure. But the fact is that they finally traded him. And I mean, at the time, St. Louis wasn't that far out of the playoffs, but I think he was the start of them saying, okay, we're not going to the playoffs this year. And even if it is just for rental purposes, Tarasenko does give them a little bit more scoring depth, provided he can stay healthy. Now, February 19th, St. Louis, again, said, hey, we're throwing in the towel. Trading their captain, who wanted to stay in St. Louis, in a three-way deal between Toronto, Minnesota, and St. Louis. Now, I'll try not to confuse everything, but here's the returns. So St. Louis gets Abramov and Godet, as well as Toronto's first round pick and Ottawa's third round pick in this year's draft, which Toronto owned, as well as Toronto's second round pick in next year's draft. With Minnesota, they get Toronto's fourth round pick in the 2025 draft. I mean, early impressions were favorable as he came right out the gate, scoring four goals in his first two or three games. But it's probably another rental basis, so watch where Ryan O'Reilly goes during the summer. Boston's stuck it up for their cup run, acquiring Garrett Hathaway and Dimitri Orlov out of Washington, just for Craig Smith and three picks, which includes this year's first. And, well, I mean, if the hype is to be believed and Trev's to be ultimately eating crow by the end of the year, that pick will be a very late pick. A little thrown off by the Dadanov Giryanov trade, as that one really doesn't benefit anybody. But that's why they're GMs and I'm not. Moving on. Timo Meyer ultimately got moved with a boatload of prospects to New Jersey for some prospects and some picks, which have conditions. But either way, Meyer got traded, as was expected. Tanner Janot went to Tampa for Cal Foot and five draft picks, including a conditional 2025 first. So, yeah, I hope Breezeball knows what he's doing in Tampa. This could be a move that works out really well or really bad for the Lightning, but time will be the ultimate answer to that. Either way, I mean, that's good for, for Nashville to stock up on five picks. They can do all kinds of things with five picks. The Oilers finally got Pugliarvi off the books, essentially sending him to Carolina for a prospect. Now, I think this is a great thing for Carolina because, I mean, most guys that come out of Edmonton just need that change of scenery. And this could be exactly what Pugliarvi needs is just that change of scenery to actually showcase what he's got. But I have been wrong from time to time, so don't take my word on it, but this could be a good move for the Hurricanes. Luke Shen, going back to Toronto 
for a third. So this could be a full circle thing for Shen. I mean, and it's like probably another rental situation, but you can be surprised if he decides to re-sign in Toronto. But that's probably a free agency thing as well. And speaking again of the Oilers, Matthias Ekholm going to Edmonton for Tyson Berry. That was a good cap dump for the Oilers and a chance for Ekholm to play in the playoffs. But also a clear sign that under Barry Trotz, Nashville is going to be going through a rebuild. So don't expect them to make a lot of noise for the remainder of the year or next year. That's my early guess. And then finally, the trade almost everybody was waiting for, Patrick Kane out of Chicago, going to Broadway, a three-team deal with Arizona. Chicago gets two picks from the Rangers, as well as two prospects, one from Arizona. Well, Arizona receives the Rangers' 2025 fourth-round pick. Now, does this make the Rangers a solid contender for this year's Cup? Definitely. Is it going to push them to the Cup? I'm not 100% sold, but we're still in the regular season. Let's talk when we get to the closest to the playoffs. Either way, it does make New York a formidable scoring threat in the right circumstance. And, I mean, Kane and Panarin, come on. Who doesn't want to see that reunion, right? It was gold in Chicago. It'll be better in New York, I hope. So with the expected names going, now the unexpected names started coming. And Jonathan Quick, after 16 years of being L.A.'s guy in the net, got traded to Columbus and found out on the plane back to L.A. Now, granted, L.A. came out of this with good assets in that trade, getting Gavrikov and Corpus Allo, but at least wait till the plane lands before you trade the guy, right? But naturally, I, I for one didn't think Quick was going to Columbus. Not anyway, not anyhow. So the next day, March 1st, he was traded back to, back to the Pacific Division, more specifically, traded to Vegas. But 16 years only find out on the plane. Ouch! I'm sure they'll forget all that when they retire Quick's number. Hopefully they gave him a statue too, but... Ouch! Shane Ghost Bear, or Gosseless Bear. I call him Ghost Bear, it's easier for me. Going to Carolina. I'm glad he's getting the chance to play in the playoffs. I mean, hopefully his presence makes the Carolina defense strong, because, I mean, either way, the cup goes through Boston, I think. But it's good to see him get some of that playoff scenery now. Sticking with March 1st, Jacob Chickren finally gotten his trade request accepted. Another one of those guys that have requested the trade so long ago and finally got traded. Got traded to Ottawa for first and two-thirds. It surprises me that Ottawa would make this move, but at the same token, they're not that far out of the playoff spot. So look for Ottawa to make the push. Whether or not it's this season, I don't know, but they're certainly starting to look pretty good for next season if not for this year. So this brings us to March 2nd, which would be yesterday. Tyler Bertuzzi going to Boston for a first conditional and protected, as well as a 2025 fourth. Again, rental situation. I didn't think Boston was going to go for Bertuzzi. I didn't think Boston needed Bertuzzi. But hey, whatever helps their cup run, right? And as I said, I think the cup goes through Boston. But damn, they're looking good for the playoffs, let me tell you. And the last one I'm going to talk about before the actual deadline itself, Max Domi going to Dallas, along with a prospect for Kadobin and a second rounder in 2025. Damn, for the short career Domi's had, he's been all around a lot. I I forget which team this is for him now, but... Hopefully he finds a comfortable ground somewhere. Again, this is another rental situation. I'm pretty sure he's up at the end of the season. But maybe some playoff experience doing him good. Maybe it'll add to his resume. I don't know. But the sooner he can settle down somewhere, I think the better it'll be for him. But that's just my thought. For Dallas, I mean, it's good to see them get Kadobin off their books, finally. They've only been trying for, well, since they made the play since they made the Stanley Cup in 2020. But... 
a good move either way, but hopefully it benefits somebody. Now as for the deadline itself. For the actual date, the day today, March 3rd, 19 trades, and a lot of them were late before the buzzer sneaking in through the wire trades. A lot of them were involved in prospects. A lot of them were involved in picks. There were some interesting ones, most significantly in my mind anyway. Jordan Greenway going from Minnesota to Buffalo for a second and a fifth. I didn't think they were going to trade Greenway. I thought Dumba for sure, but not Greenway. But I'm sure Bill Guerin knows what he's doing, right? And I think this is probably the first time I've ever heard of this happening. A brother was traded for a brother. <laughs> Nick Ritchie went from Arizona to Calgary in a package deal which involved his brother, Brett Ritchie. Imagine running into one another at the airport along the way. You're either laughing or you're cursing the other guy out. You know, either way, that's yeah. You don't hear that. You hear of teams trading for the brothers, not trading the brothers. But interesting to see that kind of thing happens. And then the last one I'm going to talk about: John Klingberg going from Anaheim to Dallas to Minnesota. Sorry, for Schuster Nestorenko. And a fourth round pick in 25. Again, another rental. Might help Minnesota in the playoff run, but I think that I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't think a rental is what Minnesota needs. I mean, it's good for Klingberg to hopefully see if he got he can elevate his game somewhere else because I know he's on a one year deal. But we'll see how it goes for both parties. It's, it's intriguing, but at the same time, it's eyebrow raising in my mind anyway so overall here's what I thought of trade deadline day for the day itself I found it was pretty lackluster it didn't really add a lot to anybody's overall imagination compared to what happened in the month prior in the, the week prior in the past couple days like again the big names that were supposed to get traded got traded then when the names that you didn't expect to get traded started getting traded, it's like, oh, well, who's safe now? But overall, it's good to see teams are active. But let's remember, deadline day is deadline day. It only comes once a year. Let's save some excitement for deadline day, right? At the same time, though, I mean, how many more players would be voluntarily scratched for trade purposes? It's another one of those things that you just don't really hear that much of till this year. But either way, I thought it was pretty lackluster for the deadline. The day itself, the leading up to it, though, yeah, it was it was great. There was some great names, great great trades, and overall, the movement and some, some way some, some players were going. I thought it was I thought it was a good week, two three weeks leading up to the trade deadline itself. Some really good trades being made. I mean, does it help some of the overall teams bigger picture? It definitely helps the Bruins. It definitely helps the Rangers. It definitely helps the Hurricanes. Out West, I don't know. Hard to say, but not every team was very active. Not every team had impact deals to make. And thankfully, those might not affect much at all. But either way, the day itself, like I said, pretty lackluster. Leading up to it, I liked it. I liked, I liked some of the moves. Let me know your thoughts on the trade deadline. Another one of those hockey shows. Oh, thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you're at this point right here. That's great. That's a great thing for both of us. It helps me out. And, I mean, the fact that you're listening to me, that's, that's even better, right? But either way, if you like what I'm doing, if you just want to say hi, if you want to let me know you've made it this far, hit that like button. You know you want to. That red button over there that says subscribe all over it. Come on, we're at 200. Let's make that 250 push. That way we get to the next goal. Do so if you haven't already. It'll make you feel good. So, social. My one and only social that I barely use. It's in the description down below. Let's move forward. I'm going to give my Seattle take on the trade deadline. And then we'll worry about 
any more regular season videos if they pop up more by then. But next real push is the end of the season. Either way, in the meantime, in between time, be looking for some Chev. Later.